Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com uh, and we're here today to look at a 2020 DPS ski, the Whaler 100 Alchemist RP. Uh, it's spring here in Vermont, so you know, it's April 4th today, ski season's kind of winding down here in Vermont. We got a couple of weeks left, um, but we're, we're really just getting started on this, this 2020 ski stuff. Um, if you saw in our last video, we mentioned that we did just wrap up our 2020 ski test. Um, we're, we're still going through the results from that test, but we've, we did a, we tested about 230 different skis, um, well over 60 testers. We were out three full days at Stowe. So really took the test to the next level. Um, we really can't wait to share that, that res, those results with you. Um, and until then, you, you know, you'll see those results later in the summer, July, August, around that time. Until then, we're going to keep rolling out these 2020 ski reviews um, all the way through the summer. And then after the ski test, too, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, we've got a lot of skis to share with you. This one's pretty exciting. Pretty much anything that comes from DPS is, has got some new, cool, innovative stuff. Um, so definitely really excited to share this one with you. Um, and I think we'll just dive right into it. This is the Whaler 100, as I said. Um, I didn't have a Whaler 99. We're sold out of the Whaler 99, but I thought I'd put the Nina 99 up here, um, essentially the women's version of the Whaler, but very, very similar. And we'll, we'll talk about some changes from the 99 to the, this 100. Um, but just a fantastic all mountain ski. Um, you know, definitely a super, super versatile ski, um, arguably as versatile as, as really anything you can get course depending on your own skiing style um, but let's um, let's kind of just dive right into the details about this ski um, and I'm gonna start with shape so there have been some changes to the the overall shape concept for the this Whaler 100 um, basically you know shape is still relatively similar it's still rocker camber rocker it's still got a fair amount of early taper um, but that rocker and early taper has been reduced a little bit. Um, so they've extended the side cut further up through the tips and the tails of the ski. So you get longer effective edge. Um, but it's definitely still a, in my opinion, a classic DPS shape. I've, I personally, and I think probably most of you, have become pretty accustomed to looking at a DPS and seeing this, this early tapered tip. Um, early tapered tail as well that corresponds with a significant amount of rocker. Um, so change there um, in, in the rocker and, and early taper, it's slightly reduced compared to the 99. Um, and then you get a, a 15 meter turn radius throughout all the lengths. Um, I personally think it's kind of cool when companies do that when they change the tip and tail dimensions um, in order to keep that turn radius the same regardless of which length you're in, um, kind of to ensure the ski skis as they meant it to, instead of, you know, instead of designing a, a 180, for example, and then the ski kind of gets a longer turn radius in the longer lengths, shorter in the shorter lengths, and it does really change the way that that ski feels. Dependent on what length you're in, with the Whaler 100, you're getting 15 meter turn radius through and through, um, through the whole line. Uh, which I think is cool, and and that's that's in my opinion relatively short for a ski with this hundred hundred millimeter waist width. <clears throat> um, among among versatile all mountain skis, other other competitor skis with a one hundred millimeter waist width, fifteen meters is definitely on the small side. Um, but I, I like that. I like that they they provide a different option here, and then this has the the newest generation of DPS Alchemist construction. Um, so. Alchemist is a, a 
carbon-based construction. Essentially, there's an aspen wood core that's sandwiched between two layers of carbon. Um, and it's not just any kind of carbon. Uh, DPS uses vibration-tuned aerospace-grade carbon fiber. Um, it's something we've talked about before on Ski Essentials, but it really does quiet the ski quite a bit. Um, and then for this new version, they have specifically located damping agents within the ski. <clears throat> so they've, they're designing it, basically if you talk to DPS, they'll say that since the early 2000s, they've been on this, this quest of, of delivering a, a super responsive ski um, that's also very damp and quiet. So if you've been on a lot of carbon skis, you'll probably know that some of them are, are almost too responsive. They're so light and they're so responsive that they kind of respond to skier input so quickly that it, it, can, be, um, it can be a downside in, in certain situations. Um, kind of makes certain, certain carbon skis feel a little bit twitchy, uh, unstable at times. So DPS is really focused on on delivering smooth performance um, as well as that that high level of responsiveness. So this is the their latest and greatest construction. Um, pretty exciting to <clears throat> kind of see them continue to tweak their construction, can tweak tweak their designs to to just achieve the the next level. Um, it feels like DPS is definitely one of those companies that kind of it's never satisfied with the status quo. They're always trying to push the envelope, whether it's with their skis or, or with phantom wax or, or phantom wax, waxless glide. Um, they're always doing something new and new and exciting. So that's the gist of this new Whaler 100. Um, that's the overall theme, some tweaks to the shape, a shorter turn radius than what we saw in the Whaler 99, um, and then that new Alchemist construction. So let's just go into performance then. Um, I'll say the first time I skied these, I was on firm snow. It was really more of a groomer day than anything else. Luckily, we had a fantastic season here in Vermont. So even on the days that were more groomer days, there was still usually some snow in the woods that we could play around on and do some testing. I've skied these, I think, like four or five different days now. So definitely put them to the test in, in different snow conditions. I most recently skied them on a kind of a warmer spring day. Um, and they're really cool skis. The first thing that I noticed was their performance on groomers. Um, something, you know, with this shape in general, whether it's a DPS or not, uh, my, my instincts or my, my initial impressions of it before I even ski it is that's going to be super, super maneuverable and it's probably not going to be that great on groomers. Um, oftentimes with this shape, you got a lot, a lot of movement, a lot of tip flap, uh, tip or tail flap, um, which, you know, either, maybe it's chattering, maybe it's just kind of a slow wobble, but either way, it, it's usually not great. Um, sometimes it doesn't take away from the actual performance of the ski. It's more of a visual thing or, or more of a perception thing, how you're perceiving the, the movement in the tip to change stability. Um, but in terms of carbon fiber skis, in terms of skis with this shape, I was blown away by these, these Whaler 100s. Um, they're, they're way smoother than I think any carbon ski or any like really carbon based ski than a, that I've ever been on before. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like they're achieving the feel of metal, um, but it's so much lighter. Uh, this, this binding, something I mentioned in the article is, is Tyrolia demo bindings are not super light. The plate that they're on is actually metal. So it does, it increases the weight of the ski if you were just to pick it up. Um, so at first I was kind of like, hey, this isn't that light. And then as soon as I clicked into it, you know, kind of just pivoting my skis around just, you know, before I was even skiing really, just kind of testing out the swing weight. They feel really, really light and j they, they link carving turns so smoothly. It it's really was, surprising to me um, and they also hold an edge really well I never really thought I was going to lose lose edge grip um, I didn't ski them on the steepest iciest terrain or if I was I wasn't really trying to hold a carve through that type of snow or that type of terrain um, but they're the, just the way that they link 
link carving turns very smoothly um, for me was was surprising and and was really really fun um, and, and just a great skiing experience and I think a lot of people are really gonna like this I think that 15 meter turn radius it's helping um, helping to give you a very round fun turn shape uh, it's not a long turn shape by any means it's not even really like GS ski turn radius I mean definitely not competitive GS ski turn radius but we as consumer skiers what we perceive as GS radius it's it's smaller than that really um, and with this shape with the rocker and early taper um, it just it, it stayed really quiet really smooth really glued to the snow um, which which I was very impressed by um, just just a lot of fun kind of linking those medium sized carving turns um, and then it is really easy still even though they reduced the rocker profile reduced that early taper still quite a lot of it there um, so when you want to it's really easy to release that tail edge and I should say because of that it's not you know, if you put this put this up against a Blizzard Bonafide, no, it's not as powerful. It's not going to have the same edge grip. Yes, a heavier, aggressive skier could probably push this past its limits, um, but I never really felt like I was going to. I'm pretty lightweight, um, and and I think I have more of a kind of balanced skiing style than than some people with you know, say, if you have a race background and you're really driving the shovels of the ski you might find that this isn't really what you're looking for on groomers, but for the vast majority of people out there, it's absolutely fantastic. And then as soon as you want to release that tail edge, <clears throat> it makes those, those pivoting, kind of skidding turns really well, um, really easily. Uh, and I think it was, for me, it was a lot of fun to just kind of lay over some smooth carves and, and, then, and then get into like some side of the trail skiing where, where I was just releasing the turn edge and making quick pivoting turns um, and that I think is a good way to transition into it as an off-piste off-trail ski um, just a whole lot of fun um, here in Stowe we have pretty tight trees so it's always kind of a question of how quick you can maneuver your skis and with this shape this swing weight in a 179 I felt like an absolute pro in the trees um, you know, really easy to just take direct down the fall line lines um, and, and you can you know in the back of your mind that it's going to be really easy to maneuver the ski. Um, I thought they, they stayed they stayed nice and composed through um, a variety of different snow conditions so I skied them in a lot more than just just perfect light powder and, and they did really well. Um, I think the one thing that the one thing that I'm not even going to call it a drawback to this ski, it's, it's just something that you got to remember with, with this shape. Um, it, it responds to input so quickly that when you're in soft snow or, or in ungroomed terrain especially, if you give it, if you make a movement on it and give it skier input, it's going to react really quickly. Um, and I spend a lot of time on skis with longer turn radii and then also wider you know fatter tips and tails skis without really er any early taper or at least not as much as this um, so it took me a little bit to get used to this ski um, they don't really want to make like that slow high speed slow high speed kind of contradicts itself but high speed skiing but a long slow turn where you're kind of washing part of the turn maybe you're slashing real quick like halfway through it they don't really like to do that in powder. What they like to do is make a lot of, of really precise turns. Um, and I think something that I said in the written portion of this article, I think that benefits the skiing style of the vast majority of skiers more than those like big, fast, skidding, slashing powder skis or, or all mountain skis, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, in, in talking to people around here in, in the staff, this really is is kind of what we're looking for for our like all mountain tree ski here in Vermont. I think even a western skier could enjoy this too, but they might, you know, here in the east it's kind of nice to have something narrower too, but a western skier this this will probably satisfy their needs as as a groomer ski even or it it could um especially if it's somebody who's not really like they don't ski super fast, they're not just looking to charge, they're looking to play. 
maneuver, have fun. Um, so that's the, the DPS Whaler 100 Alchemist RP. Um, I could definitely spend a lot more time talking about it, but I, I'm going to try and keep this short. Please let us know if you have any questions about it. As with all DPS skis, there's a lot to talk about. Um, and and kind of my, my big takeaway on this ski is, is if you've got the money, um, if it's in your budget, you know, DPS, they're not cheap skis. They're, they're made here in the United States. They have their own factory. They use high-end high, high -end materials, um, high levels of craft, craftsmanship. So you're paying for it. Um, but if you're comfortable with that, that amount of money um, and you want a really, really versatile all-mountain ski, it's hard to do much better than this for, for most skiers. Um, and, you know, I'll go back to the fact that there are going to be people out there that want something heavier, that want something with less early taper or, or less rocker. Um, but I, I don't think that's, I certainly don't think that's the majority of skiers. I think most skiers would prefer being on, on a ski like this. Um, and, and just the mix of performance characteristics, I mean, I, I use that term a lot, but mix of performance characteristics in this ski is, is pretty hard to beat. Um, and, and just, I'll, I'll go back to just how impressed I was with, with the smooth performance that they're, they're achieving with this construction. Um, the vibration damping is, is crazy considering that it's mostly carbon fiber that's, that's you know, achieving this performance. Um, so, hats off to DPS. Well done, as always. Um, and, and we've, to go back on Phantom, we've all been pretty psyched with our Phantom skis this year. Um, I'm going to be out in Colorado coaching at USASA Nationals next year, so we should get some really kind of slushy spring snow, and I'm excited to really put a, a pair of Phantom cured skis to the test in that. But again, kudos to DPS on, on their skis and to Phantom. Um, we've been really happy with both and yeah, let us know if you have any questions about this ski and we will see you guys on the slopes.